absolute value questions are probably the easiest questions you're going to end up having. Um, there's just one thing you have to remember. And the first thing, well, there's a couple things you have to remember. The first thing is you always want the absolute value by itself. And that varies very similar to radicals in that, in that format. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And get 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 4. Then divide by 2. And then I get the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 2. Once you're here, there's two things you have to do. The absolute value of a number is it's going to be x minus 3 equals 2 or x minus 3 equals negative 2. You have to remember that you take this and that stays the same, but you keep this positive for one and you have to negate it for the other. So here I'm going to x equals 5 or x equals 1. And when we plug this in, 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. Or I get 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but the absolute value of a negative 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8. There is one other thing I want to show you. If you should happen to have something like this, the absolute value of x minus 3 equals a negative 5. Well, you might say, okay, well, x minus 3 equals negative 5, or x minus 3 equals positive 5. And when you do this, you'll add 3, and you'll add 3. And you'll be all very pleased with yourself because you're doing some pretty basic math. And you'll add 3, and you'll add 3. And you'll say, oh, goodness me, that was super easy. My answer is negative 2 and positive 8. Well, the problem is, when you plug them back in, negative 2 and negative 3 gives you the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5, not negative 5. And 8 minus 3 is 5, um, which is not negative 5. And so the, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. And so the problem is, whenever you have the absolute value, if it's just the absolute value, it has to be equal to zero or greater. You can never have a negative value. And that's it for absolute value.